Mizrahi music like this was once considered niche. And it was pushed to the sidelines of Israeli culture. Today, it's exploding onto the mainstream and redefining Israeli music. Artists like Omer Adam and Ewa blend Mizrahi music with modern pop, creating a contemporary music scene that represents the diversity of Israel today. So, what does the rise of Mizrahi music teach us about the changes in Israeli culture over the decades? After the formation of the State of Israel, many Jews were expelled from Arab countries, and there was a mass immigration of Mizrahi refugees to Israel. From Yemen to Turkey and Morocco to Iraq, each Jewish immigrant community brought their own distinct musical traditions, their own distinct PU team, and they brought over instruments like the kanun, oud, and darbuka. At this time, Israel's central culture was dominated by Ashkenazim, or Jews with roots in Europe. Radio stations focused on international hits from America and Europe, and Hebrew music by mostly Ashkenazi musicians. Mizrahi musicians were siloed from the mainstream. Things began to change in the late 60s with the invention of cassette tapes. Israeli radio stations still wouldn't play Mizrahi artists, but this didn't stop bands like Slile Haoud from earning an underground following. This era also introduced the king and queen of Mizrahi music, Zohar Argov and Ofra Chaza. Zohar, often called Hamelech, the king, was born in 1955 to Jewish parents who immigrated from Yemen. Zohar rose to stardom in his 20s as a singer known for his beautiful vocals and traditional Mizrahi melodies, giving Israel such hits as Haperach Begani. Seen as one of the most notable Israeli artists of all time, he also led a very troubled life. He was convicted of rape and struggled with drug abuse for years, which contributed to his death at the young age of 32. Ofra Chaza was also born to parents who had immigrated from Yemen. Her career catapulted in 1983 when she represented Israel at Eurovision with her seminal hit, Chai. It won second place and turned Chaza into an international icon. Sadly, she died at the age of 42. And like Argov, her legacy continues to live on. These trailblazers paved the way for the Mizrahi stars of the 90s, like Sarit Haddad, who is one of Israel's biggest superstars. She's released a whopping 25 albums and countless chart toppers. Her music ranges from this to this. She also has had a major international impact. One of her songs has even been covered in Chinese. And she became a favorite in Jordan, where she played in the 90s and recorded an album of songs entirely in Arabic. Another prolific singer from the 90s is Eyal Golan. His first studio album introduced his unique blend of Mizrahi music and modern pop. and has since become a mainstay of Israeli pop music with 21 platinum-selling studio albums. However, even with all of these Mizrahi stars, radio stations continued to mostly ignore Mizrahi music well into the early 2000s. Gal Galatz, Israel's most listened to radio station, has been making or breaking careers since 1993. It plays a wide range of music, from Israeli hits to American Top 40. Gal Galatz finally began to give Mizrahi music more airtime during peak listening hours in the mid-2000s. Now, it gets significant airtime every single day. With a Jewish population of over 50% Mizrahi and Sephardic identifying Jews, Israel's pop music is finally matching the country's diverse makeup. Today, Omer Adam is hands down Israel's biggest chart topper. He became famous on Kochav Nolad, Israel's American Idol. He may have even won if he didn't have to leave the show when they found out he was 15, not the required 16. This didn't stop Adam's career from skyrocketing, and he soon became a music sensation with his very first single. Since then, he has released six successful albums with his song Shnei Meshugaim, becoming the most played song of 2018. <laughs> His mix of electro-pop with Mizrahi music has earned him international acclaim. Another notable group is Ewa, made up of Yemeni Jewish sisters. They sing in a Yemeni dialect of Arabic and often dress in modern takes on traditional Yemenite Jewish garb in their colorful music videos. They've played concerts in Israel, Europe, and America, and have fans all over the Middle East. And if you've been to an Israeli wedding, there's a good chance you've danced to a Static and Ben El song. They've got tons of hit singles, including their Brazilian meets Mizrahi pop hit, and 
and their collab with Pitbull, Further Up. Mizrahi music has also gained traction in Arab countries. In Yemen, specifically, artists such as Sion Golan are a current favorite. And following the normalization of relations between the UAE and Israel in 2020, influential singer Walid El Jassim collaborated with Israeli singer Elkana Marciano. <laughs> Israel's popular music has evolved from the Ashkenazi-dominated music of the 50s and 60s, the rock and pop of the 70s and 80s, to the Mizrahi music of the 90s, and today. As Israel's popular music has evolved from completely westernized to more Middle Eastern, so has its cultural identity. From cassette tapes to the top of the charts, Mizrahi music has gone from niche to mainstream in just a few decades. Crossing geopolitical boundaries, bridging cultures, and introducing Israel's diverse culture to the world, Mizrahi pop is the soundtrack of modern-day Israel.